let us begin with hematology and oncology system so in this system uh, we are going to discuss the embryology of the system anatomy physiology pathology and also pharmacology so let us begin with this uh, hematology and oncology especially embryology part so first thing we need to know is fetal erythropoiesis that is in a fetus uh, when does the erythropoiesis start actually it occurs first in the yolk sac so the blood cells start to form in the yolk sac uh, three to eight weeks and next it transfers to the liver uh, from the liver uh, it's from six weeks to birth so three to eight weeks yolk sac six weeks to birth liver then after the birth the baby's uh, blood cells are forming from the spleen that is 10 to 28 up to 28 weeks even after the birth still spleen is only forming the blood cells later it transfers to bone marrow in the bone marrow it will start from 18 weeks until adult yeah even now uh, the blood cells in our body are coming from the bone marrow so this is the order so to remember this order you can uh, remember this mnemonic young liver synthesized blood young liver synthesized blood wafer yolk sac l for uh, of course liver and next uh, synthesized blood b for bone marrow so, uh, s synthesis is for spleen okay so the, this mnemonic is very useful otherwise you can just remember it like that first yolk sac after yolk sac it will uh, transfer to liver from liver to spleen spleen to bone marrow next coming to hemoglobin development so you know hemoglobin is actually having uh, two uh, globin chains that is alpha and beta which is seen in adults so that's why you can see here adult hemoglobin hpa1 alpha and beta whereas fetal hemoglobin is called a hemoglobin f here there is alpha and gamma that is the difference gamma is seen in the uh, fetus whereas beta is seen in the adult embryonic globins are uh, this delta and e this are the embryonic globins and then there is also another hemoglobin uh, which is having alpha and delta there okay mm, you can see here this is hemoglobin a2 hemoglobin a2 have alpha 2 and delta 2 so hemoglobin f has higher affinity for oxygen due to less avid binding of 2 3 bpg so this allows hemoglobin f to extract more oxygen from maternal hemoglobin so that is the reason why mm, hemoglobin f have more affinity for oxygen so that it can grab more oxygen from the mother and hemoglobin a1 and a2 are across the placenta hemoglobin a2 is a form of adult hemoglobin which is present in small amounts even in a fetus a small amount of hemoglobin a2 is present that is alpha 2 and delta 2 but most common hemoglobin in adults is alpha 2 beta 2 so to remember this also you can have a mnemonic like alpha always gamma goes beta uh, be becomes beta okay alpha always gamma goes becomes beta becomes beta in adult gamma goes because uh, it is in fetus alpha always alpha is always present in everything you can see either in hemoglobin f hemoglobin a1 or hemoglobin a2 alpha is always present okay so this is a graph uh, where you can see the fetus weeks of development and postnatal months this is the bone marrow uh, in adult you can see the hemoglobin a2 is maximum and in fetus you can see hemoglobin f is maximum uh, even you can see hemoglobin uh, 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 delta uh, delta one that is hemoglobin a2 is also present small amounts in fetus but mainly it is a hemoglobin f which contains a gamma alpha and gamma okay alpha and beta this is a, a adult type so it will peak in adult next here you can see one important uh, reaction that is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction so this is like uh, when you transfer the blood what happens uh, but especially if you transform some wrong blood like wrong blood group then that will lead to acute hemolytic transfusion reaction because of transfusion there is hemolysis hemolysis means breakdown of blood cells that is especially rbc so if there is performed antibody to the donor rbc so if some blood group you are giving donor rbc there is a performed antibody against it so that is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction this is mainly by transfusion of incorrect blood product that is leading to acute hemolysis it will lead to dic dic is disseminated intravascular uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation right uh, that is uh, all the platelets are being uh, consumed towards one side so there will be bleeding at the same time also coagulation that is dic so in acute hemolysis our blood cells are breaking up the platelets may get decrease and uh, there will be bleeding at the same time there will be oh, you know overuse of uh, platelets in one side and it is also associated with fever jaundice uh, whenever there's jaundice there's dark curing why jaundice because hemolysis blood cells are breaking down so that will lead to increase uh, either conjugated or unconjugated bilirubin and that will lead to jaundice and it will lead to dark urine if it is coming in the urine then it will be 
conjugated bilirubin right and it is coombs positive and systemic or clinical error sometimes because of systemic or clinical errors also sometimes this may happen so anaphylaxis what is anaphylaxis is a allergic type 1 reaction so hypersensitive reaction type 2 is because of antibody and antigen mediated whereas type 1 hypersensitive reaction is due to allergy it is occurring in IgA deficient individuals they produce an anti IgA antibody so anaphylaxis the problem is the patients don't have IgA uh, they are IgA deficient so they may produce anti IgA antibody treatment is stop transfusion argue epinephrine and testaments in the case of anaphylaxis next coming to febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction this is caused by cytokines in the blood like interleukin 1 some blood products undergo leuco reduction so this is a febrile non hemolytic this is there is no hemolysis here but it's a febrile just a small transfusion reaction caused by cytokines next trally that is a transfusion related acute lung injury because of transfusion there is lung injury that is hypoxemia in transfusion infiltrates are seen on x-ray by neutrophil activation and you can see pmns in lung and also you can see pmn release the cytokines and that will lead to reactive oxygen species and enzymes so all this come and damage the pulmonary capillary endothelium this will lead to exudative fluid loss that is a pulmonary edema so this a storm like condition uh, which is caused by all these inflammatory markers in the lung and that is leading to pulmonary edema why this all actually started with the hypoxemia because you give wrong blood group that is leading to decreased blood cells that is hypoxemia that is decreased oxygen levels and all this is causing finally pulmonary edema and the transfusion reaction is just to stop the transfusion so in this case of trally just we need to stop the transfusion not only this even febrile non hemolytic transfusion and aphylaxis acute hemolytic in all these conditions because of transfusion there is problem so it's the first major treatment is to stop the transfusion next let us move on to the blood groups blood groups are actually defined by the antigen which is present on the rbc for example you can see here the abo classification and rh classification according to abo classification if the a antigen is present on rbc it is a if b b if both a and b are present a b if nothing is present neither a nor b then it is o okay positivity will say uh, it is uh, a positive b positive like that because of this rh antigen if rh antigen is present that will be positive if rh antigen is not present that will be negative one important thing is that this abo blood group classifications all of them have a capacity to form igm antibody you know that igm antibody can't cross the placenta whereas rh classification is producing igg antibody and igg antibody can easily cross the placenta so that is the reason why uh, this uh, rh positive negative this conditions will cause some erythroblastosis fetalis in children we, will, we are going to discuss it further so this is a transmembrane protein and rh classification this rh positive negative all these are transmembrane proteins and you can see the platelets express abo and hla class 1 antigen that is important platelets also show this abo antigens and also they are showing the hla class 1 antigens now let us see the group antigens on rbc surface so for uh, uh, for a it is a antigen already we discussed this and here but very important thing is an rh classification if it is rh positive means it is expressing the rh d <coughs> If it is not expressing the RHD antigen, then it is called as RH negative. Now coming to the antibodies, the antibodies will be opposite to the, uh, the type of antigen they present. For example, A antigen antibody will be anti B, B anti A, A B there will be no antibody. For O there will be both anti A and anti B. Like these antibodies are formed whatever which is not expressed. For example, here A is expressed, B is not expressed, so anti B. Here B is expressed but no, not A is expressed so anti A. Here both are expressed so none of them antibody is formed. Here I, neither A nor B is expressed. So both anti A and anti B antibodies are formed here. Here coming to RHD, here there is no antibody because uh, already D is uh, expressed here. But in RH negative the D antigen is not expressed so there is anti D antibody. So now coming to the clinical relevance of this the compatible rbc blood types to re receive so the a person can receive both a blood and o blood b person can receive both b and o blood a b person can receive a b a b o blood o person can receive only o blood next coming to compatible rbc types to donate 
सो ए पर्सन कैन डोनेट देर ब्लड टू ए एंड ए बी बी कैन डोनेट देर ब्लड टू बी टू बी एंड ए बी ए बी पर्सन कैन डोनेट देर ब्लड ओनली टू ए बी ओ पर्सन कैन डोनेट द ब्लड टू ऑल ए बी ए बी ओ सो दैट्स वे द यूनिवर्सल डोनर ऑफ द ब्लड इज ओ पॉजिटिव ब्लड ओ सॉरी ओ नेगेटिव ब्लड ग्रुप एंड ए बी ब्लड ग्रुप आर यूनिवर्सल रिसिपियन दैट इज समन हु इज हैविंग ए बी ब्लड ग्रुप कैन रिसीव ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ ब्लड दैट इज ए बी ए बी ओ एंड ओ कैन गिव देर ब्लड टू ए ए बी ओ ऑल दोस सो ना कमिंग टू आर एच पॉजिटिव एंड आर एच नेगेटिव हियर कैन सी द पर्सन हु इज कंपेटेबल uh compatible rb to receive so the rh positive blood group can receive both a positive and negative rh negative can receive only negative blood group whereas uh, compatible to donate uh, rh positive blood group should donate only to positive people rh negative uh, can donate both to positive and negative so these are some important points uh, regarding this now coming to anti kill antibody antikel antibodies usually igg that means it can cross the placenta it is actually a uh, igg uh, antibody of a kel positive pregnant patient may cause hemolytic disease of newborn when produce following previous sensitized to kel antigen actually the baby will produce first one antigen and the mother body will produce antibody against this so because of this the baby may undergo hemolytic reaction and the blood may loss in the baby in the newborn and this is transferred through placenta so the target fetal rbc precursor there is decrease rbc production and mature rbcs increase hemolysis resulting in severe fetal anemia so even if the baby is born they will have severe fetal anemia because the mother is only producing the antibody against the baby's blood so this anti kill antibodies may also be associated with hemolytic transfusion reactions so ma'am this is also associated with this transfusion reactions as we discussed before like uh, transfusion related acute lung injury febrile non hemolytic transfusion all these things <clears throat> now let us come to hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn so this is also called erythroblastosis fetalis here the problem is it is divided into rh hemolytic disease and abo hemolytic disease rh hemolytic disease is that uh, the pregnant patient is rh negative and the fetus is rh positive so here what happens in first pregnancy is the patient is exposed to the fetal blood during delivery and that will lead to formation of maternal anti d igg so this subsequent pregnancy in the first pregnancy the baby will be normal but next time what happens is the mother will remember this uh, antigen and it is ready with the antibody so this will go and cross the placenta and directly attack the fetus and newborn rbc that will lead to hemolysis so the presentation is hydrox fetalis jaundice after the birth and kernicterus and treatment and prevention is by administration of anti d igg to harsh negative patient during third trimester it is better to uh, we ourselves uh, give the anti d igg to rh negative patient so what happens is uh, here what happens is so as we already grew, giving this mother will stop producing this antibodies you can see pregnant patients during third trimester and early postpartum period if fetus is rh positive so this will prevent the maternal anti igg production so ma maternal will not produce this because we are already giving this antibody now coming to abo hemolytic disease abo hemolytic disease is a type of pregnant patient with type a or b fetus so mother is either o positive or o negative but the patient is type a or type b so it is a pre existing pregnant patient anti a or anti b and uh, igg antibodies cross the placenta and they attack the fetal and newborn rbc and that will lead to hemolysis so the problem is the patient is already having anti a and anti b antibodies because a patient is o oh, if you remember here uh, here you can see you can see here clearly the patient is so that is the mother is so she have already anti a anti b uh, antibodies right so if the baby is having this a and b blood group then this antibodies will go and attack on this and that will lead to hemolysis in the baby that is the concept here so the baby may have mild jaundice in neonate within 24 hours of birth and unlike rh hemolytic disease it can occur in first born babies and is usually less yeah it can occur in the first born baby itself because here already the mother is having antibodies because uh, the uh, baby is a or b right and treatment is phototherapy or exchange transfusion because we need to transfuse the blood and also we need to phototherapy to decrease the jaundice
Now let us continue with the hematopoiesis. So hematopoiesis is nothing but the blood cells formation. Here you can clearly see first there is a multipotent stem cell. This multipotent stem cell is either divided into myeloid stem cell or lymphoid stem cell. So if it is divided into myeloid stem cell, it has a chance to uh, form many different types of cells. Uh, either erythropoiesis to form RBC, thrombopoiesis to form platelets, granulocytopoiesis to form ben, benmens, uh, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils or monocytos mono, monocytopoiesis to form macrophages uh, if it undergoes through lymphoidic stem cell it undergoes lymphopoiesis to form plasma cells t cells and b cells okay so let us discuss first the myeloid stem cell erythropoiesis erythropoiesis first there is erythroblast erythroblast will convert into reticulocyte which is a precursor and it finally it um, forms erythrocyte so you can see in the bone marrow in the bone marrow erythroblast to reticulocyte this process undergoes in the blood the erythrocyte is formed even in the tissue it is rbc erythrocyte okay in thrombopoiesis megakaryoblast is present in the always remember this blast cells blast cells are present inside the marrow okay and uh, megakaryocyte of course also in the bone marrow in the blood it will come as platelets granulopoiesis myoblast it forms a band here like this in the bone marrow finally in the blood they will come as band that is a basophil eosinophil neutrophil next monoblast in the bone marrow next it will convert into monocyte uh, in the blood and finally macrophage also again in the tissues this is very important monocyte will travel to many tissues and form different types of macrophages according to the location okay so macrophage in the tissues so lymphoid stem cell lymphoblast in the bone marrow b cell t cell natural killer cell in the blood and finally in the tissues b cell will form the plasma cell t cell will form the t helper cell and t cytotoxic cell so this is important in the tissues what is going on till bone marrow everyone knows thin blood everyone knows but in the tissue remember the monocyte convert into macrophage and the b cell will convert into plasma cell t cell will convert into t helper cell and t cytotoxic cell okay so next let us discuss about different types of cells like neutrophils erythrocytes everything okay first we'll start with neutrophils neutrophils are actually multi having multi lobe nucleus you can see here this is a multi lobe and the special characteristic is doll like bodies doll like bodies are a light blue peripheral inclusions you can see in this arrow these are doll like bodies and multi nucleated actually it's an acute inflammatory response so when there is acute inflammation first the neutrophils come and they're also at same time phagocytic they have specific granules called as leukocyte alkaline phosphatase lab and also collagenases lysozyme lactoferrin azeotrophic granules which are lysosomes they also contain proteinases acid phosphatase myeloperoxidase beta glucuronidase and also like in bacterial infections also they'll come out so actually they have left shift and leukoerythroblast reaction what is left shift it is a increased neutrophil precursors that is band cells metamyelocytes in peripheral blood reflects the states of increased myeloid proliferation so left shift is like whenever you see more precursors in the blood then you can find out easily that oh something is going on like uh, you know increased myeloid proliferation there is inflammation or there is chronic myeloid leukemia in this cases uh, there will be left shift leukoerythroblastic reaction is left shift accompanied by immature rbcs so there are immature rbcs which suggests the bone marrow infiltration like myelofibrosis or metastasis so because of that uh, there is also erythroblast increasing so that's why the name you can see leukoerythroblast that is erythroblast is increase and also leukocytes that is a immature leukocytes so all are increasing so this is about uh, neutrophils some important points are like there are chemotactic agents c5al interleukin 8 ltab4 5hct these are leukotriene precursors calicrine platelet activating factor n formal methionin all these are bacterial proteins hypersegmented neutrophils or sometimes have six plus lobes are seen especially vitamin b12 folate deficiency so vitamin b12 folate deficiency you can see the hypersegmented neutrophils as we said it's multi lobe sometimes six plus more multi lobes will be present hyper segmented neutrophils okay so next we know about erythrocytes uh, are you know they carry oxygen to our tissues and of course carbon dioxide to the lungs they are anuclear there is that is no nucleus no organelles they are biconcave in the shape clearly you can say and they have light 
uh, you know sorry large surface area to volume so that they can useful for rapid gas exchange lifespan everyone knows 120 days and 60 to 90 days in neonates okay and this energy it's a uh, glucose the source of energy for rbc is glucose that is 90 percent is used in glycolysis 10 percent is used in hmp shunt and these membranes contain the chlorine and bicarbonate antiporter which allow rbc to export bicarbonate and transport carbon dioxide from the periphery to the lungs for elimination so that is what erythrocytes erythrocytes actually when uh, they are higher means the number increase that is polycythemia and that is leading to increased hematocrit you can see here clearly and isocytosis means varying sizes different size poikilocytosis means varying shape so these are basics which are very important regarding rbc and isocytosis means they are in different sizes poikilocytosis means different shapes reticulocyte is immature rbc which reflects erythroid proliferation so it is a precursor okay bluish color is polychromatia on bright gymsa stain of reticulocyte which represent residual ribosomal rna next thrombocytes or platelets uh, you can see this arrow the small small these are uh, rbc and this side this small dots are platelets they are involved in primary hemostasis everyone know they are a nuclei the small cytoplasmic fragments they derive from megakaryocytes the lifespan is 8 to 10 days and they are activated whenever there is endothelial damage or injury so that all the platelets will come and aggregate and also they will interact with fibrinogen to form a platelet plug right so they contain actually a dense granule platelet contain dense granules which are having calcium adp serotonin this is important and also histamine so you can remember it like cash so platelet is always carrying cash with it what cash calcium adp uh, serotonin and histamine okay and it also have alpha granules so dense granules is dense so it is having dense cash like that you can remember and it is having alpha granules which is having von willebrand factor which is also you know useful for the uh, play, uh, plug formation right and it also have fibrinogen fibronectin and platelet factor 4 so platelet factor 4 von willebrand factor fibrinogen fibronectin are present in alpha granules approximately one third of platelet pool is stored in the spleen so spleen also stores the platelets next the thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia means decreased amount of platelets right so this results in pet shear because low platelets so there will be bleeding there and you can see pet shear one willebrand factor receptor is gp1b okay and fibrinogen receptor is gp2b or 3a thrombopoidin stimulates megakaryocyte proliferation alpha granules contain von willebrand factor fibrinogen fibronectin platelet factor 4 so you can remember like alpha granules f because one willebrand factor f fibrinogen f fibronectin f platelet factor 4 is also ff okay so now coming to monocytes monocytes are especially found in blood they differentiate into macrophages in tissues so they are large kidney shaped nucleus you can see the kidney shaped nucleus the extensive frosted glass cytoplasm you can see their cytoplasm is like a glass okay next coming to macrophages so as we discussed monocytes only going to tissue form macrophage it is a type of antigen presenting cell they phagocytose bacteria cellular depress and is rbc so it's like a, uh, a dustbin i can say because all the dust is going into this like okay long life in tissues it is differentiated from circulating monocytes activated by a gamma interferon and can function as antigen presenting cell via mhc class 2 this is very important antigen presenting cell and also engage in antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity it is important cellular component of granulomas example tb sarcoidosis where they may fuse to form giant cells okay macro means large phage means eater so it is naming various by specific tissue copper cells in liver histiocytes in connective tissue osteoclast in bone microglial cells in brain okay so lipid a from bacterial lps binds cd14 on macrophage to initiate septic shock okay very important point this one lipid a from bacterial lps bind to cd14 on macrophage to initiate septic shock okay now coming to dendritic cells they are highly phagocytic uh, and they are antigen presenting cells they function like a link between the adaptive immune system that is t cell stimulation and express msc class 2 and fc receptor surface as FC receptors on surface and they can present exogenous antigens on MSC class 1. 
factually this is like uh, just i need to study them there is nothing to explain they are like factual based okay next coming to eosinophils eosinophils are uh, they are defending against the helminthic infection you can see the major basic protein it is having a bilobate nucleus it is packed with large eosinophilic granules of uniform size you can see here clearly highly phagocytic especially for antigen antibody complexes they produce histaminase major basic protein uh, which is helminthotoxin so as we said before that it is against helminthic infection because of the toxin that is a histaminase and also it produces eosinophil peroxidase eosinophil ketonic protein eosinophil derived neurotoxin okay and eosin is like a pink dye and philic means loving so you can see it is a pink color so it causes of eosinophilia that is a pacman eats parasites can cause eosinophilia asthma chronic adrenal insufficiency myeloproliferative disorders allergic process neoplasia like hodgkin lymphoma which is a white cell lymphoma right eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis so all this you can remember like pac man eats so this is uh, what is causing eosinophilia next basophils they are mediation for allergic reaction the densely basophilic granules you can see which is containing heparin which is an anticoagulant and also it contains histamine which is vasodilator so leukotiens are synthesized and released on the demand whenever this basophils are activated so basophilic stains are uh, readily with basic stains they absorb so basophilia is uncommon but can be a sign of myeloproliferative disorders particularly site uh, chronic myeloid leukemia next coming to mast cells mast cells are uh, the mediate local tissue allergic reaction they contain basophilic granules and they are originating from same precursor of basophil but not from the cell cell type they can bind exposition of ige to membrane they are activated by tissue trauma they have c3a c3a uh, c5a surface ig cross linking by antigen and they lead to degradation that will lead to release of histamine heparin tryptase eosinophilic chemotactic factors it is mainly involved in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction chromolin sodium prevents mast cell degranulation it is used for asthma prophylaxis you have vancomycin opioids radio contrast dye can elicit ig independent mast cell degranulation mastocytosis is rare proliferation of mast cells in skin extracutaneous organs associated with c kit mutations that is important and increase serum tryptase increase histamine flushing pruritus hypotension abdominal pain diarrhea peptic ulcer disease next lymphocytes lymphocytes are uh, refer to b cells and t cells and also natural killer cells okay and they all mediate the adaptive immunity the natural killer cells are part of innate immune system and they round densely staining nucleus with small amount pale cytoplasm you can see very less cytoplasm but a large densely stained nucleus next natural killer cells are important in innate immunity especially against intracellular pathogens so natural killer cells are larger than b and t cells you can see with distinct to cytoplasmic lytic granules containing porphyrin granzymes that when release act on target cell to induce apoptosis they distinguish between healthy and infected cells by identifying cell surface protein induced by stress malignant transformation microbial infection they induce apoptosis natural killer in cells that do not express class 1 mhc cell surface molecules or this virally infected cells in which these molecules are down regulated next b cells mediate the humoral immune response b from bone marrow so they originate from cell cells in bone marrow mature in marrow migrate to peripheral lymphoid tissue that is the follicles of lymph nodes white pulp of spleen and encapsulated lymphoid tissue when antigen is encountered b cell differentiate into plasma cell which produce antibodies and memory cells and it can function as an apc next t cells they mediate the cellular immune response they originate from stem cells in bone marrow but mature in thymus differentiate into cytotoxic t cells which are cd8 recognize mhc1 helper t cells that is cd4 recognize mhc2 and regulatory t cells cd28 necessary for t cell activation more circulating lymphocytes are t cells so t for t thymus cd4 positive helper t cells are primary target of hiv rule of 8 mhc2 into cd4 is equal to 8 that is mhc1 into 8 is equal to 8 so how to remember that mhc2 is related to cd4 mhc1 related to cd8 next plasma cells plasma cells produce large amount of antibody specific to particular antigen they are having clock phase chromatin distribution eccentric nucleus evident rough endoplasmic reticulum well developed golgi apparatus and found in bone marrow and normally do not circulate in peripheral blood multiple myeloma is a plasma cell disease okay
let us understand hemoglobin electrophoresis just by this diagram this is a negative cathode right this is positive anode so you know already that negative will go towards the positive right so here you can see hemoglobin a is going the farthest because it's most negative next comes hemoglobin f next hemoglobin s and next hemoglobin c so the most negative one is a f and last c c and S and C. Actually, this S and C are positive. Why they are positive? Because there is a uh, missense mutation in hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C because they are replaced by they are replacing the glutamic acid which is negative with the valine and lysine uh, which are positive. Okay, so their glutamic acid is replaced by valine and lysine. So what happens is especially lysine in, in C and uh, valine in S. So because of that, they are becoming positive. So as they are positive, they don't want to go towards positive. They want it to be towards the negative side. So C and S are this side, and A and F are this side because they are negative. A and F are negative, so they look towards this. Okay. So you can see a different A normal adult, A F normal newborn, A S sickle cell trait, S S sickle cell disease, A C hemoglobin C trait, C C hemoglobin C disease. S C hemoglobin S C disease. Okay, yeah, if you want to remember this order, you can remember by mnemonic F I at Santa Claus can't go. F I F at Santa Claus can't go. A F S C A F S C. This is the order. Okay. Next, let us discuss about Coombs test. In Coombs test, actually, it is divided into direct Coombs and indirect Coombs test. Direct Coombs test is uh, named direct because here directly we are having, uh, checking the antibodies uh, against the RBC. So, actually, this is the RBC and we add the reagent. So, if the antibodies are present against the RBC directly, they form the uh, agglutination and they can say it is positive Coombs test. If they are not binding, then it is a negative Coombs test. And next, uh, indirect Coombs test is we check for the patient serum. So in the patient serum, we try to, uh, you know, add the patient serum with the anti-RBC antigen, anti-RBC antibody. And if it agglutinates, then you can say it's a positive indirect Coombs test because there are the antibodies against the patient serum. If it is not, then it is a negative. So here we'll check with the serum, patient's uh, serum. Here we'll check directly with the uh, RBC. So as we are checking here directly with the RBC, this is direct Coombs test. As we are checking here for C patient's uh, plasma, so patient's serum, right? So it is a negative Coombs, I mean indirect Coombs test. That's it.